Um, welcome to another true crime video. This video is a suggestion from Big Michael, my dad. It's actually a really interesting case and at the end, once you've formed your opinions of the case, please do let me know because I am curious to what everyone else thinks because I always think my opinion is going to be biased for some reason. Um, so I am interested to hear what everyone else thinks. Only one thing before I carry on with the video, I am intending on doing hair care in the next video. I was going to do it this video, but I physically couldn't wait any longer. I had to wash my hair. I was like, I will just do it in the next video. So yeah, there will be hair care in the next true crime video, fingers crossed. Um, not sure how it's going to come out. I've never done anything like that and I don't really have like a hair care routine. I literally just do stuff and put stuff on my hair and just call it a day but it got voted for on my instagram poll so we'll see i did put in my instagram poll slash makeup but i don't think i'm ever going to do makeup on my channel one because i don't really know how to do it um i just do the same thing every single time and sometimes it turns out okay and sometimes i hate it and, and it is what it is let's get into the case of smiley culture i do just want to say before i start because it is quite a com controversial case that everything i've found it is just on articles videos and just general media and i really tried in my research to find the actual facts but you know with the internet you never know what you're getting but i'm everything i'm saying i believe to be true so yeah let's get into the case of smiley culture david victor emmanuel better known as smiley culture was born on the 10th of february 1963 in Stockwell, South London. He was born to a Jamaican father and a Guyanese mother. He had three brothers and one sister. Growing up, Smiley gained the reputation of a bit of a ladies man. He was very confident and forthcoming and he actually got the name Smiley because from a very young age when trying to chat up girls he would ask them to smile for him which I think is kind of cute at a school age. Even in school at a very young age Smiley had a passion for music and he was very talented at it. Himself and his friend Asher Senator, who is now a very established musician, would practice and dabble in different types of music until they found their niche, which was chatting. Chatting was like talking slash rapping in a monotone style over a rhythm or a reggae beat. Music was his passion and he knew it. At the age of 14, he started off his music career with his close friend Asha. They started DJing at house parties and people loved their sound. It then progressed to them DJing on Buchanan sound systems at bigger venues. I couldn't exactly find out what Buchanan sound systems are. I think it's some sort of speaker, but the founder and the sound system seem to be very recognised. At such a young age, his late teens, Smiley's career was accelerating and he was starting to make a name for himself and his unique style of chatting made him very memorable. He was mixing Cockney with Patois and a Jamaican style of rapping, which no one had ever done before. He was collaborating with reggae artists such as Maxi Priest, and at the age of 21, so young, he got signed by Fashion Records. Fashion Records have signed people like General Levi, and in 1984, he released his first song called Cockney Translation. It has half a million views on YouTube now, considering this was released in 1984, and YouTube's a fairly new-ish streaming platform. It sold around 40,000 copies in the UK. The song was like a guide on how to speak Cockney if you're Jamaican or you speak Patois. That year, he released another song called Police Officer, and this did even better than Cockney Translation. It sold around 160,000 copies and led him to Top of the Pops, which is where he used the platform to speak out about how unfairly police treat black people in the UK. After releasing Cockney Translation and Police Officer, Smiley Culture's career was soaring and in 1986, he got another offer from a record company that he got signed to. He got signed to Polydor Records, and this record company has a lot of names you'll recognise. Polydor Records have signed artists like Billie Eilish, Juice World, ABBA, The Beatles, and so many more massive, massive names. Smiley even featured in a Nat West advert. You want your savings in a hurry? You gotta wait in line. And just when you're getting there, it's a waste of time. There's a new idea from the Natwitch Bank. You can get a service card with an online account. If you're over 14, try this new transaction to scroll on up and press for action. He was investing in gold and diamond. He was hosting on a show on Channel 4. 
and he was just so successful from a very young age. Over the next couple of years following, Smiley released a couple more songs, but they weren't as successful and his music career started to die down. So he changed his focus from music to the diamond and gold mining. He had concessions in several African countries. And on the 28th of September, 2010, Smiley Culture was charged with the conspiracy to supply and cocaine. When interviewed by a journalist, Smiley said the suspicions were prompted when he brought a Bentley in cash. For anyone who don't know, Bentley cars are an insane amount of money, probably like a hundred grand up. However, Smiley insisted that the money was given to him as an investment to make a promotional record. Although Smiley did keep his innocence, I'm not completely sure which one's true. You'd think if it was an investment, then there'll be some sort of audit on the money. And as he appeared in front of the Croydon Magistrates Court and got charged, it may be, I don't know. I don't know which one was true. From my research, I believe that Smiley stayed quiet for a couple of months and quite low key. The police, however, were still watching and monitoring Smiley. Then on the 15th of March, 2011, police got granted a search warrant to search Smiley's home in Surrey. So around 7 a.m. they raided his house for drugs. As soon as police raid a house, they have to make sure that the residents in the property at that time are obviously unarmed and then they monitor them so they keep them close or arrest them, handcuff them or whatever, but they're detained in a sense. You're probably wondering why I'm explaining this to you because everyone knows that happens. You can't just have residents walking around the house during a raid, but it plays a part. So. I just had to explain it. So four officers raided the house and they found Smiley almost straight away in the home and kept him detained where they could see him. And from here, the version of events are very controversial. However, there was a witness to some of this. Around 8 a.m., Smiley's cousin was doing a school run and passed his house. I'd seen all the police and asked Smiley what was going on. They said that Smiley was quite complacent and laid back and when they asked what is going on he just said I don't know. He was in his dressing gown, it was like 8am, he was just shrugging his shoulders, he had no idea why the police were at his house. So the cousin left, did the school run and returned only about 20 minutes later and when they returned to check on Smiley culture they found out that Smiley was dead. Some sources say during the house raid, in the search for drugs, the police officer who had custody of Smiley let him go and make a cup of tea, which I'm not going to put my opinions in too much, but I find that quite hard to believe. The officer who had custody of Smiley said that he went into the kitchen to make this cup of tea, got a knife out the drawer and fatally stabbed himself in the heart, choosing to end his own life. I've read that the knife stab was so deep it pierced through to the other side. As you can imagine, this raised a lot of questions. Why would you let a suspect go into the kitchen and make a cup of tea? The kitchen has things like knives, forks, boiling water. So many kitchen utensils can be used as a weapon. Why would you let a suspect go in and make a cup of tea out of fear for your own life, not just theirs? Another question would be, he was so laid back why would he go and stab himself in the heart? A question I had instantly was, it would be very hard to stab yourself in the heart. You would have to fight your body's natural instinct to not want to hurt itself. I just think it would be so difficult considering that wasn't even his mindset an hour prior when the cousin had checked on him. Another question is, how did the officer let it get so far where Smiley had the opportunity to get a knife out the drawer and then cause fatal physical harm to himself? What was the officer doing in that time where he had one person he had a duty of care to look after and he didn't? This house search quickly went from a drug raid to a suicide slash murder scene. So you would think the police would treat it as such, but unfortunately not. The scene was not investigated until four hours later and all the evidence wasn't secured or dealt with properly. The family of Smiley were informed of the news and as you can imagine, they were infuriated. They had so many unanswered questions that needed answers. It's hard enough to accept the death of a loved one, but it's next to impossible when it's under suspicious circumstances. Smiley's death created uproar in the community and around 700 people protested through the streets of Westminster asking for equality, transparency, and a full public inquiry into the death of the reggae star Smiley Culture.
story does not add up. We know the story doesn't add up and we're not stupid. So we are going to march and protest because the police cannot continue to pull the wool over our eyes. The Metropolitan Police didn't even speak on the matter. However, the Independent Police Complaints Commission conducted an investigation into the death. I'll read out the very short final summary of the report. The coroner has asked that the full report is not made public or shared with David Emmanuel's family, which is Smiley. The investigation condemns the raid as significantly flawed and compels MPs to overhaul the way they plan and execute future raids. This provided friends and family of Smiley no closure or answers to the situation, so a second post-mortem was carried out. The results shown that it was possible that the fatal stab wound could have been a self-inflicted injury. The pathologist carried on to say, but on pathological grounds alone, there was nothing to determine that that would be the case. Smiley's inquest went to court in June 2011 to determine whether the death of David Emanuel was suspicious or was in fact a suicide. The jury was made up of five men and six women and after 12 hours and 52 minutes they came to a majority verdict. So this is where not everyone agrees on the same vote but one vote has the majority of jury swaying that way. I feel like I overcomplicated that. But they ruled the death of Smiley Culture as a suicide. They believe that Smiley Culture stood up from his chair and went into the kitchen and from an unknown location grabbed a knife with both hands and stabbed himself in the chest. And they believe that the police officer that watched him believed this all went unnoticed until it was too late. And that is everything I have on this case. I feel like I really tried to keep my opinion out of that video but you may already know it. I personally don't believe he stabbed himself in the chest. The reason I believe this is because his cousin seen him about 20 minutes prior and he was fine. So in that 20 minutes, what changed from someone being calm and collected and compliant to suicidal? People believe that because he was going to be facing quite a long-ish sentence that he just didn't want to face it and would rather take his own life. Which is plausible, but when his friends and family know him and say he wouldn't do that, it, it is questionable. But my opinions only from what I've researched, obviously it carries no weight. Let me know what you think, because I am so curious to know what people think after hearing the case. I think if Smiley Culture did commit suicide, the officer who was watching him should be sentenced with manslaughter. He had a duty of care to make sure that Smiley Culture was safe and he died in his care. But let me know your opinions in the comments. I just want to say thanks, Dad, for the suggestion. It was actually a really interesting one. And yeah, that is everything. So see you in my next video. Bye.